lives. The massive hurricane that slammed into Florida, overwhelming first responders, rescues along the East Coast from Florida to South Carolina. In Tennessee, a hospital sending out an SOS when it became surrounded by water. Patients stranded, forced onto the roof and airlifted out. Helene made landfall on Florida's Gulf Coast, but the impact stretching 1,000 miles across 15 states, killing dozens. Overnight, desperate residents post here. As we look, this is the uh, infrared picture. This is a satellite imagery, right? So we're not looking at radar here. We're looking at the satellite imagery. And what we use this for, try to pick up a well-defined center of circulation, certainly getting a nice rotation around a center, kind of a ragged eye. Uh, we, we're looking for that clear definition of an eye. Uh, we're still at 85 mile an hour winds. So uh, a hurricane, absolutely. But as we get them- One of the worst situations you've ever seen. And, and it is, and here's why. Um, we had a, all the ingredients, all they were there for this disaster to, to happen. So we had a big blocking low pressure that developed to our west, a big upper low, the hurricane's approaching. We get this stalled frontal boundary that comes in and uh, just sits there and dumps rain on us before Helene uh, even made it to shore. So we had all of this rain falling here. So our soils are becoming saturated. We're setting the stage for landslides already uh, with that rain that arrived before Helene. So we had now Helene come in just to our west. So that low is pulling Helene toward it. And that gave us what we would typically call the dirty side of the storm. It gave us the most intense winds, that right quadrant out here is where you see the worst wind from a storm. So we definitely got uh, the highest winds uh, out of that storm as it came by, and that certainly knocked down uh, all the trees. I mean, comparable to uh, maybe Hugo out there with the tree damage that we are seeing. And uh, that system still sits out to our west. It will give us a chance for a few showers today. No widespread rain, but some additional rainfall totals are possible. I'm going to walk you through that part of the forecast coming up here and show you those river levels, Madison, coming up in just a few minutes. And there's so much sand. You can see in the video they are working to clean up and clear out that sand because it's hard to just maneuver around. So they want to make sure that they keep people safe. That's why they are preventing people from going onto the island. And they're also asking people who were stuck there. They asked them yesterday if they wanted transportation off. They arranged that. They had that arrangement. So right now it's a one way ticket out. They told us that yesterday when we were at St. Pete Beach for the governor's press conference. They told us, hey, one.
notices and warnings. The system made landfall in western Florida in its Big Bend region last night as a Category 4 hurricane. At least four people have died as a result of the storm. The governors of Florida, Georgia, Alabama, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia all declared emergencies in their states. Well, CBS News national correspondent. That building there is going to come apart. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Say a prayer, friends. This is uh, Widden heading down the Gulf. I was trying to make it to my mama's house, but it's neck deep here. I'm not able to get any further. Oh, man. This is the museum. Oh, no. It's chest deep here now. Oh no, the water's made it in the museum. I'm not gonna be able to go much further. It's about to be over my head. It's hard to take in. However bad we imagined it would be when we were fighting this thing in the darkness, it's so much worse in the daylight. Entire houses are missing or flattened in on themselves. The hard door is gone. It's unbelievable. Godspeed, Cedar Key.
commercial building in town of consequence is just gone. I saw houses that um, had been destroyed. I saw places where houses had been 12 hours earlier and there was no sign of them at all, just completely gone in a bed of sand. There are stretches of road where you're used to seeing a familiar house, a house that's been there for maybe 160 years and it's just missing. A lot of people dazed, uh, not a lot of people, a very few people, but all of them dazed. And all of us just sort of wondering where our town had gone. This is our third hurricane in 13 months. Um, and prior to this one, it was the first and sixth worst hurricanes we've ever had in a year. And now this one dwarfs the other two combined. I never thought that we would be talking about places in the United States that would be suffering this kind of repetitive, increasingly damaging weather events with frequencies as often as they are. And this doesn't give anybody a chance to recover. This is one of the last great bastions of blue collar, old world Florida. So um, the romantic in me wants to maybe think that uh, some of the folks that think this is an ideal place to vacation will, will think otherwise and we can get back to being a sleepy fishing village. I have felt everything from a desire to walk away from this island and never step foot on it ever again to digging in as deep. Well, happy Saturday and happy weekend to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. You know what time it is. It's time for us to talk all things tropics. It's been another super busy week with the tropics. Of course, we had the landfall of dangerous, monstrous, and deadly Hurricane Helene across the Big Bend of Florida. Last report, I believe, over 50 fatalities, unfortunately. Tremendous flash flooding, widespread wind damage, millions of people across multiple states are without power. So this is just another example of just how ferocious and how deadly these tropical systems can become. So I want to give you an overview of where we've been this season and talk about potentially what's to come for the rest of the season. Look at this. We started off with Alberto earlier on in the season, but now we are up to 10 named storms out there. And let's count how many of these have strengthened and become hurricanes. Of course, we had Barrel hit the Houston area as a category 180 mile per hour hurricane back on July 8th. Of course, before that, it briefly strengthened to a monstrous Category 5. So that's one. We had Debbie, Ernesto, Francine, Helene, and Isaac. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six hurricanes so far for this 2024 Atlantic Basin season. How many of those have become major hurricanes? Well, that would be Beryl and also Helene. Of course, a major hurricane is anything Category 3 or stronger. So the next name on the list would be Kirk, then Leslie, then Milton. Do we have a shot of getting any of those systems? Well, let's find out. It looks like there's certainly a chance. We do have a couple of areas of concern that we're monitoring. Before I get to that, though, let's talk about Helene, or at least what's left of it. We're calling it post-tropical cyclone Helene, or the remnants of Helene. It's basically lost its tropical characteristics. It's kind of merged with another storm system, and it is in the process of dying out, winding down. Thank goodness, it's already done enough damage. So over the next 24 hours or so, it's basically just going to kind of sit near Nashville, Bowling Green, and Evansville in Tennessee and Kentucky and kind of rain itself out, wind down, fall apart. So notice the winds have really diminished in this, only about 15 miles per hour. The National Hurricane Center will no longer be issuing any additional advisories on post-tropical Helene. But even with a much weaker Helene across the Tennessee Valley, there's still the risk for more heavy rain that could lead to flooding. Of course, Helene produced widespread wind damage, gusts near 100 miles per hour for parts of Florida and Georgia, but the even bigger impact came from tremendous and deadly flash flooding across Florida, across Georgia, the Carolinas, even into Tennessee and Kentucky. So this is three-day rainfall, and those purples and whites are some of the hardest hit areas, including Atlanta, over towards Charlotte, into the Asheville area in North Carolina, certainly some very, very dangerous flash flooding occurred. In fact, here is the hardest hit area. This is our three day rainfall total. We're looking at North Carolina, western parts of North Carolina and northwestern sections of South Carolina. Check this out between 30 to almost 40 
inches of rain in just the last three days. This is just south of Asheville and south of Hendersonville. So there were numerous high water rescues, helicopters evacuating people from the rooftops of buildings because that water was raging and there was no other way to explore. We have to start worrying about that one. Now this one I'm a little more concerned about. This is an area to watch in the Northwestern Caribbean Sea and now it's up to a medium 50% shot for tropical development over the next week. That means between now and late next week, we have a decent chance, a 50-50 chance of having an area of low pressure develop likely just to the south and east of the Yucatan Peninsula. Then it would most likely track northwest into the Gulf of Mexico. Oh no, that just happened with Helene. We don't want that to happen again, but it looks like there could be a similar setup and notice the general motion off to the northwest and look where we are here in Houston, very close to that track. So we are gonna have to keep a close eye on this one. Hopefully this doesn't pan out. Hey, there's a company giving away a mini solar generator for free and it But of course, if we do have a tropical system develop and head our way, that means we're really gonna have to crank up those rain chances towards the end of next week. Even as we widen the view here and check out forecast rain through Friday, notice all of that tropical moisture already beginning to surge northward in the Gulf, beginning to push closer to the Houston area. Right now, between today and Friday, we are in that basically that rain total around one to one and a half inches or less. But of course, if this tropical system develops, those rain chances could go way up if it heads our way. So we will be closely tracking that as we go through the rest of this week into next week. As far as water temperature, water temps, even with Helene rolling through, are still super warm. They've soared well into the 80s, and that, once again, will act as that fuel needed if this next tropical system can get going in the Northwest Caribbean and push into the Gulf of Mexico. So we will keep you updated day by day on what happens with that system. As we are getting very close to the month of October, these are some of the hot spots that we look at to basically see where we have a higher than average chance for tropical development for named storms. And it's the Western Atlantic, South and Southeastern Gulf of Mexico, and the Northwestern Caribbean Sea. So those are gonna be the areas with a higher risk Although we can see development basically anywhere, but we are certainly monitoring that area the most. Of course, we are still in a typically historically very busy part of hurricane season. September usually the busiest month and that's exactly what's been going on. We've had a ton of systems to monitor and a big time deadly hurricane Helene roll through the Florida area and the Southeast US over the last few days. We're about to jump into October. The first few weeks of October can also be quite busy. I think once we get past the middle of October, that risk for hurricanes hitting the Houston area will start to go down, but it's still gonna be there. We've got to get through the entire hurricane season before we can give you the all clear. So stay alert and be aware that yes, there could be a tropical system developing in the Gulf of Mexico, especially by mid to late next week. So things are quiet now, so don't let your guard down. Make sure you've got your emergency gear for any potential tropical storm or hurricane ready to go. And of course, if you haven't done so, make sure to head to your Smart TV's app store. Just search for Fox Local, download it. Of course, you can get our details, tropical updates, a lot of exclusives, tons of stuff to watch on there to keep you entertained and to keep you informed of potential tropical weather and other themes that may be going on. So grab that Fox Local app and of course, check us daily for an update on what could be brewing in the tropics. Once again, I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha 